Hey everyone, welcome to another art product review. Today I'm going to review a set of watercolor brushes that is made by Wild Plane. This is a set of portable pocket watercolor brushes and it comes with this faux leather case. And this was given to me by Paul Wang, whom you may have seen in many of my cafe sketching videos. So in this particular set, there are supposed to be six brushes Four has been given away by Paul, so I'm left with two. The sizes that are included are size 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And they are supposed to be um, housed inside this case. This is not real leather. On the back, we have some fabric. On the front, we have some faux leather-like material. I'm not sure how durable this is compared to real leather. This is the stitching with red thread. The overall look and feel of this case does feel a bit cheap, but that's because it is cheap. The whole set, including the brushes, is selling currently around US $80 on Amazon. And for that kind of price to get six brushes with natural sable hair, it is quite incredible. So on this side, we have a pocket and there are two buttons here that you can put stuff inside and below this uh, holder here you can actually run your hand through it like this so you can sort of hold your brushes like this while you're painting or you can basically turn this around and tie it up like this and have a standing case so you can put this on your table and have your brushes like this so this is quite a functional case at the end of this string we have this little pendium this is quite cool it looks like a coin the design is the same on both sides and this is the string that is attached to it these are the two collapsible watercolor brushes that I have. This is a size 6 and this is size 12. The body design looks very similar to the Escoda, except, well, the color, of course. They have this pattern texture on it. This is the side that you can pull out to attach to the body. And on the other side, we have a ventilation hole. Let me say a few things about the build quality. When I first took out the brush, I felt that this is a bit too loose. So to fix that, you have to press this side down to close it up so that when you attach the brush, it's going to be firm. If not, sometimes it may wiggle. I have an issue with the small brush as well. This part here that connects the wood to this it's a bit too loose so when I try to keep the brush I would just usually just put it like this and in this case this part has detached from this part and this does not go all the way through so if you are going to keep your brush like this it's going to damage the bristles it's going to bend the hair because this part is supposed to go together with this part like this and this will go in like this and this is tight enough, but this, um, these two parts here, it's not tight enough. So again, the fix is to sort of press it down slightly, or you can use a clamp as well, just to make sure that this will fit very tightly. So I highly recommend that you check the bodies of the brushes before you use them so that you do not damage the hair when you keep them. And now I'm going to compare the wild plane brushes to some of the pocket brushes that I have. Escoda, Da Vinci, and maybe this Navskaya Palitra. What's amazing about the wild plane brushes is the price that they are selling at, which is around US $80. So for that price, you can get a set of six brushes. Now this brush that I have here, this Da Vinci Maestro pocket brush with Kolinsky sable, this is US $80. This is just one brush. And for the same price, you can get 
six brushes with the wow plane set so that's quite a deal a good watercolor brush is one that can hold its point well one that can return to its original shape after each application and one that can hold quite a good amount of water so i'm going to test out all these brushes to um, see what their differences are the two brushes on the left side they are Escoda reservoir kolinsky sable brushes this is the da vinci sable brush and these two are the wild plane brushes and from what i can see right now there isn't a lot of difference visually all the points are quite sharp let's test out the smaller brushes first the size six this is the Escoda Reservoir. I'm going to test for the thin lines that you can create and its ability to return to a sharp point. So this is as thin as it can get and it can return to a sharp point very easily. The Escoda Reservoir is a very good brush. It's pricey, but it's worth the money. All right, let's switch over to Wow Plane, size six. So the strokes on the left, they are from the Escoda brush. And now this is Wow Plane. Let me try and get the thinnest line that I can get. This is not as thin compared to the Escoda. Let me try some thick and thin lines. This is definitely not as sharp compared to the Escoda. Let's take a look at the points. Both brushes have a good snap and they can return to their shapes easily. But the Escoda brush, the one at the top, it has a sharper point compared to the Wild Plane brush, the one at the bottom. Because the point on a Kolinsky Sable brush is so sharp, this is great for coloring details. You can really reach the sharp areas the sharp edges the tiny areas very easily so this star is now being colored with a kolinsky sable brush and now i'm going to try and do the same with this wild plane brush It certainly can be done, but it's slightly easier on the Kolinsky Sable brush. And now let's test out the large brushes. This is the Da Vinci brush. I can get a very thin line very easily. This is almost like a hairline, very thin. And now let's try and get some transition from thin to thick. And now let's use the wild plane brush to do the same. Let me see if I can get a really thin line. Maybe there's too much water. Let me take away some water. You can get a thin line, but it's not as thin or as easy compared to using a Kolinsky Sable brush. 
So let's try the transition now from thin to thick. So does having a sharper point matter? Well, it depends a lot on the type of subjects that you paint. So if you are someone who likes to paint a lot of details, if you want to paint shapes, very specific shapes, then having a sharper point will make it easier to paint those details and shapes. If you are someone into pen and ink sketches, you like to sketch very quickly and loosely, then I think the wild plane brushes, they do quite well for the price that they are selling at. Let's compare the two. Once again, it's slightly easier to get thinner lines with Kolinsky Sable. Here, I wasn't able to get that really thin line, that hairline stroke with the wild plane brush. In terms of water carrying capacity, both brushes, they have very good water carrying capacity. They can hold a lot of water. So for the transition from thin to thick and back to thin, from what I can see, I would say that Kolinsky Sable, it's again slightly better at that. It's a bit more challenging with the wild paint brush, but with practice, you can definitely do it. Both brushes can release water consistently, so that's great. I do not see any random areas of increased intensity or value. The wild paint brushes, they do have certain characteristics of sable brushes, namely the ability to hold a lot of water. So this brush here, the wild paint brush, it can hold a lot of water and it can go back to its shape. However, the point is not as sharp compared to the more expensive brushes like the ones from Da Vinci and also from Escoda. This is how the points look like after application. So the Da Vinci is able to go back to its sharp point and the wild plane, it will go to this shape that looks like this. This is how the bristles look like after each application. The Da Vinci brush can go back to its sharp point very easily and the wild plane, well, it goes back to this shape. So if you want to have a sharp point, you have to sort of um, point it yourself. Larger watercolor brushes are more commonly used to paint larger areas, larger washes. So it may not be as important compared to smaller brushes to hold a sharp point. But there are artists who would prefer to have a sharp point on their large brush as well. And I'm one of those artists because when you are painting a large wash, sometimes you want to touch up little areas, you want to add some details. If you have a brush with a sharp point, a brush that can go back to its sharp point, you do not have to switch brushes, so that is very convenient. Overall, I have to say that the wild plane brushes, they are really worth the money. There are certainly some limitations. For example, the wild plane brushes, they cannot give you hairline thin strokes like the Da Vinci or the Escoda, but for the price that they are selling at, this, um, they perform quite well. The build quality of the brushes, they may not be as good compared to the more expensive brushes. Sometimes they wiggle a bit, but it's not really a deal breaker to me. Most of all, I'm really amazed by the pricing. If you're going to buy a size 12 sable brush from other brands, it's most likely going to cost over 100 US dollars. These are very good brushes for the price that they are selling at. And if you are interested to get a set for yourself, just visit the link in the video description below. And if you want to check out my reviews for the other watercolor brushes, you can also visit the links in the video description below. I have reviewed most of them on my website and also YouTube channel. So that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.